She, take, she took over the bus, Wednesday bus duties for me because I couldn't be here on a regular basis. She does a good job with that. I want y'all to thank her for doing that. She does a great job. And she's taking over the Yes, she's, she started doing this too. Uh, it seems like anytime you ask her to do something, she don't know the word no. So we appreciate it. Thank you, girl. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to know what y'all said. <laughs> Another person I want to thank is Tanya Cannon. She took over the child, the, the youth ministry, whenever we had kind of a problem with that. She stepped in there and taken that over and done an excellent job with those kids. Yeah. And I want to thank, thank you for that. The uh, Snooky and his bunch, I, I, I had a deal up there, but it disappeared. Ah, <laughs> oh, here it is. I thought that was last week. Huh? I thought that was last week. No. It's oh. the 26th. Uh, on October 26th, the singing men of Texas West will be in concert. Uh, it's going to be at First Baptist Church here in Colorado City. Uh, it's the 26th. It'll be starting at 7 p.m. Uh, they do gospel music, and uh, there's uh, this one picture has about 25 people in it. Looks like they're uh, on the stage uh, performing, and uh, probably a nice thing to go watch. And I'm sure they appreciate y'all being there. <coughs> Steve, no, sir. <coughs> Tonight we're going to be doing our continuing our study as a peacemaker. Uh, we're going to start a new chapter tonight. It's called the stomach and the heart for ministry. So tonight, come and enjoy the the fellowship. It is an open forum class, and we use scripture, and it leads us to how to become successful peacemakers in a world gone wrong. So please join us. I want to thank Steve for taking that this deal on that he's doing on Sunday evenings. We've never had Sunday evening church here, 
and uh, he's taken that up, and it's a, a very successful thing. We thank him for doing that. Anybody have anything else? I do. Okay. I do. Uh, Friday at 2 p.m., uh, we have a video, video sermon type thing. And this Friday is a really good one. It's called Israel, What Next? And it's current, and, uh, and it's a really good video. If y'all haven't seen it, you can probably catch it online somewhere. But anyway, I downloaded it, and we're going to be showing it Friday at 2 p.m. So if y'all have anything to do, come and watch it. I want to thank her for doing that too. That's something she does all the time and doesn't have to do. And we need to keep those folks in our prayers and memories over there. Uh, they are in a extremely bad situation. Some of those people can't get out of the country. A lot of our American citizens get out of the country. So we need to keep them in the name. Brenda. 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 What? Candy. 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 She's still begging for candy. We're still begging for candy. Uh, we've got two big box, two big trash cans full, and another about half full, and we need to fill it all up again. Uh, any, any candy that you can come by and bring to us, but we've got buckets at the front door and the back door. Just dump them in a bucket or give them to whoever's working the door or whatever. And, uh, I think we still need one to the store. Okay, we're still going to need like one big can of chili. Okay, one big can of chili. Start working on that. Preferably wolf brand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. Don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, know that we keep on that stuff. We still have music on Wednesday at 6 15, as far as we know. <laughs> okay. So what? Uh, okay. Uh, we kind of let let off the jam a little bit, let them have a little rest. Uh, they're gonna do some uh, congregational music. Start about six fifteen on Wednesday for about thirty minutes, and then we'll have services. We was gonna have it last week to my back when I got. Uh oh. To my back stays. If your back stays up. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's October the thirty first. It's still be the last day. I told you how long it's day because it fell in kind of the middle of the week. I think it's a Tuesday. Is when we're going to do that. Anybody else? Show the Lord a prayer. Lord, we are so grateful to you for letting us be here today. Uh, we get to congregate here. There's a lot of countries right now that that doesn't happen in. Uh, it's, uh, in some places it's illegal and folks are persecuted and prosecuted and put in jail uh, for having a gospel meeting. And Lord, we thank you for the free country that we live in. We thank you for the people that keep that country free and open. Uh, our uh, Law enforcement people, our military personnel, our medical professionals, we always ask that you be with them and guide them and protect them. Uh, we have a possibility of some of our military personnel being involved in the conflict in Israel. Lord, we hope that does not happen, but if it does, uh, we hope that you will be with them and ask that you Watch over them and give them your protecting hand if that does occur. Lord, we thank you so much for the ministers that we have here, our pastors. Uh, today, Brother Steve is going to bring our message. I ask that you be with him during that message. The words we hear from him, we know come directly through him from you. And we ask that you be with him and guide him and bless him with that message. Lord, I ask that you protect us the rest of this day, be with us through the rest of this day, and guide us as you see fit. I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Okay,
Thank you.
Say, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to give you thanks for the many blessings that you have given us. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful Sabbath day, and we just thank you for the opportunity to come before you and I in your house to sing praises up home to you and to hear your word. We just pray that you will be with this um, conversation this morning, just let your presence be felt among us, and let's fill our hearts with your love. As we come to give back a portion of what you have given us, we just pray that you will keep this offering for your kingdom and for your glory. Bless this gift and endure, and we ask that you forgive us of our sins, dear Lord. And go with us now through the remainder of this day and this new week. These things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
should be a C. Yeah. Uh, G, G, George. What about you, Miss Lily? You want to buy the parking car or the gun again? I said, oh, it was Now, I didn't sound like that. It. it was low, but not that bad. <laughs> Man, I wish I had a car. Maybe she was. What did you say? George. I said, George. <laughs>
when you go in, it probably break off, wouldn't it? When I was doing remodeling, I had a lot of different tools to use for a lot of different things. And if I didn't use the right tool, it was very difficult to get the job done that I needed to get done. And you know, that's the same way it works in our life. God gives us so many tools to use, and I wrote some of those down right here. God gives us so many tools that we can use to do His will, to lead others to Him, and to live a good Christian life. He gives us all these tools. What are some of these tools? Faith, hope, love, perseverance, fellowship, going to church, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, respect, courage, the Bible, and other Christians. Yeah. He gives us all these tools, and if we use tools like anger and hate and ugliness, that's not going to be very good to get God's will done, is it? If we use bad tools to try to get something good done, it's not going to work very well. But if we use these good tools that God gives us, this morning in Sunday school, I know you learned about the fruits of the Spirit, and some of those are on there. Kindness, gentleness, self-control, love, all those things are on there. And you know, when we're going through things in our life, we have to remember to use the good tools that God gave us. Not the bad tools that the devil puts out there and says, oh, you can just hate on somebody. You can be mean to somebody. We want to use these good tools that God gives us, right? All right. This week, I want y'all to remember all these good tools that we have. And if you use the right tool, you'll, you'll get through, okay? All right, let's pray. Thank you, God, so much for this day. Thank you for the tales being here this morning. Thank you, God, for the tools that you give us to do your will. We know that your word tells us in Hebrews 13 that you'll equip us to do every good work, to do your will. We know that you'll help us along our, every step of our way that we go, Lord. You'll help us with all the tools that we need. Thank you for loving us, and thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody hear me okay? Hear me okay? All right. He said he was going to sit over there because he could hear me better. So that's the best, the best sounding area. Good morning. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning. I want to thank those that are watching online for joining us. I pray that the Holy Spirit teaches us today of something that we need. We desire, we always desire God's guidance, God's instruction. So, I will ask a question to start out. When and how many times in your life have you had to make a decision whether you follow God or man? Okay? Maybe it's a decision that you had to make in a job. And it hurt because you were torn between being a person of righteousness within God's eyes or righteousness within man's. You see, today's world demands that we find righteousness within ourselves. Our government wants us to find righteousness within what they say. Some church leaders want you to find righteousness in what they push. Okay? What is the truth? You're here today for answers. Everybody is here for an answer. I want to be able to answer those questions that are in your heart today and that plague you throughout the week. I want to give you a word, a scripture, in which you can say, I am righteous 
in God's eyes. I don't care what man thinks. If you will turn to your Bibles to one of the most beautiful books in the Bible, the book of Psalms, we're going to read a Psalm of David. A man righteous by God became unrighteous by his fall, but became righteous again. David is the example of how we can become righteous, stay righteous in God's eyes. So that question I ask, how many times have you been told you need to make a decision and your decision may affect the promotion, may affect if you have a job tomorrow. Maybe it's a friend. To end a relationship as a friend or to strengthen a relationship as a friend. So, we're going to look at the whole 11th chapter of Psalms. It's not a very long chapter, but a very impactful chapter that David wrote this song. The title of this song is The Lord Loves Righteousness. Start in the first verse of chapter 11. It says, In the Lord I put my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked in their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the stream, that they may prettily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous. But the, good, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come this morning. Lord, I pray that our hearts and our minds and our souls are right this morning to receive what the Holy Spirit has to say. I am only a vessel, a man broken, a man unworthy. To deliver your word. But because I am saved by grace and I am submissive to the Holy Spirit, you can use me as a vessel. Now, Lord, take us this morning as we learn about righteousness in your eyes. If there would be one soul in this sanctuary this morning, that needs to justify their righteousness through you and recommit or make that first time decision that they do that this morning. Now forgive us because we fall very short in the righteousness of your eyes. Make us whole and make us want to do your will and not ours. And I pray this in your precious name. Amen. 
So righteousness. The dictionary tells us that righteousness is doing the right thing. In other words, integrity. To an extent, doing right when somebody's looking and nobody's looking. You see, righteousness is very hard. It is a satisfying and excellent and pleasant to the Lord. Right? It's a sweet aroma to the Lord to see people of righteousness. In our world today, as broken and as torn as it is, discouraging as it is, today we need to stand in the righteousness of God. God's eyes. Righteousness was made and created through God. And only through God can we achieve righteousness. That is through salvation. You see, man today is always, you do you, I do me, and we'll be okay. I've had to make decisions in my life where I was told, you will write this with this person, or this will affect you. And I will thank you. I had to make that decision. And I prayed. And I was like, God, you're controlling this. I'm just here. And I told the individual, I'm not going to argue with you. You're not going to change my mind. For I know that the righteousness within God's eyes is where I need to fall. And if I do that, and I make that evaluation different for that young man, then I am not doing what I should do in a rightful sense. Yes, it hampered me for the rest of my years. But you know what? I never regretted standing in the righteousness of God when I made that decision. Thing is, how do you stand when it comes to righteousness in your life, in your home, and in your church? Is righteousness something that's on the top of your list? We know salvation is on the top of our list for those that are unsaved. But righteousness should be within the Christian's top ten list. For if we cannot be righteous in God's eyes, then we cannot witness effectively. Our witness is diminished. The effectiveness of the cross is diminished. And that is our whole purpose and our whole goal. You see, we achieve righteousness when we accept salvation, but it goes beyond that. Some people drop it off at salvation. In Romans 3.10, Paul tells us, there is none righteous. No, not one. That's even us that are saved. That have salvation. Only through Christ do we achieve righteousness through God's eyes. But we still can fall out and become unrighteous. Right? Look through the characters that we read through the Old Testament. Moses was a righteous man. Correct? He fell into unrighteousness in God's eyes because he disobeyed God at one point. But he returned to righteousness towards the end. But God held it against him and did not let him enter the promised land, but let him see it. 
Look at the righteousness and the unrighteousness of David. Made decisions as a king. Some of them righteous for the better of Israel and to follow God. Then he made a mistake. Fell out of righteousness within God's eyes. But then realized what he had done and asked God for forgiveness and returned to righteousness. Through our prophets in the Old Testament, we see that they had to be righteous within God's eyes in order to get Israel to understand what they were doing wrong to straighten their way. We look at Daniel. Daniel was a righteous man. Daniel went through torment and and slavery. But he stayed righteous even when he was told you can't pray to your God. He stayed righteous. He suffered for it, but God protected and delivered him. So, is it any different today than it was then? No, it is not. Maybe we feel that. Maybe we feel that it's harder today to stay righteous within God's eyes than it does in man's. And the times have changed. No, times didn't change. Maybe we did. Our hearts are still hard. Our hearts are still brutal. How many will take a step of self-ambition over doing what God calls you to do? What God tells you you need to do? That's why preachers and pulpits today, they've lost the righteousness of looking to God. We are just shepherds. We are just vessels. Our church leaders are just vessels. They do what God wills. And God instructs. As we go through our world today, which side do you stand? Do you stand on the left or the right? God doesn't want you to stand in the middle. I preached a sermon a few, a while back, and I used the analogy. You walk to the left, you're okay. You walk to the right, you're okay. You walk in the middle, you just wash my hair. Right? When David was talking about the arrows that were being shot towards the upright, that happens to us every day. It happens in a decision you have to make every day. When you wake up, you make the decision, am I going to live for God? Or am I going to live in the world? Righteousness. Righteousness is so important. The Bible always makes things repeat when it's important. Jesus told us the difference and taught us the difference between being righteous and unrighteous. He he taught us through the rich man and Lazarus. The parable of when Lazarus died and the rich man died, the rich man went to hell, Lazarus went to heaven. Righteousness within God's eyes, but not within man's. That's where the that's where the rubber meets the road for us. And this morning, as I've studied this for the week, righteousness is so important. Righteousness is where we start. Do we live our salvation? Or do we just put it as an insurance policy in a lockbox? Growing up, myself, I was raised in a church, in a Christian family. But did you know 
even doing them and having that positive influence, you still can fall from righteousness. Teenagers today, we can raise them children in that nursery to love God, know who God is, know that they need salvation. But when they become teenagers, it's a different world. Okay? Those of us that are parents, we see that. We've had to live it. The late nights, I know where you live. The decisions, you'll have to answer to God for that. And even those, whenever we go through those situations with our children, we still love them. We still support them. Right? They're still righteous to an extent in our eyes. That's the way God sees us. That's the way God sees us. We are the teenagers. We rebel. We turn away. We'll follow the road for a little bit. But then we want to go through the bar ditch and get over to the service road from the highway. And when we do that, God has a way to reach out and say, hey, wait a second. Wait a second. Come back. He does that through situations in our lives to wake us up, to, to tell us, listen, you're going off the wrong way. But our own free will says, we know better. We know better. How many times have we done business with somebody? And we did, and we made a decision, and we knew that we shouldn't have made a decision because it wasn't a righteous decision. And it ends up hurting the relationship or causing burden upon somebody else. You see, God is there. The Holy Spirit is still convicting us every time we come up on those situations. It's important for us to know that God judges the righteous and the unrighteous the same. Okay, we're all going to be judged one way or the other. You can take that perspective as the righteous. Those are some that say, I'm living for God, but don't live the righteous life. Would you agree with that? So if I'm proclaiming that I'm living for Christ, I'm living for God's will, but yet my life doesn't reflect it, I've hurt the cross. I've hurt the witness. I've hurt the gospel. Okay? I've damaged my testimony. And there's going to be a judgment for that. The judgment, God removes those that harm his people, his testimony, and his witness. That's a grim and brutal way to look at it when we see that God judges the righteous and unrighteous. Unrighteous is simple. You rejected me, you refused me, leave my son. With us that are believers, we've accepted salvation and we do things in our lives that aren't right in God's eyes and it's not righteous. That's a judgment that we have to stand there and we take. And there's going to be tears. Oh, I should have done it differently. I should have said it differently. What can I do wrong? The thing is, is at that point, it's too late. We have to make those decisions here and now. Just like the unrighteous. Jesus tells us, you make your decision now, because when you die, it's too late. 
look at the disciples and Paul. Some of the disciples, after Christ was crucified, they scattered. They left. Were they unrighteous? We don't judge. But they scattered. But in Acts, they start coming back together. And they formed what is called the church that we know now. It was called the way in their time. But it became a church. The church was full of righteous people. People looking for righteousness in God's eyes. Some did. We have stories of the early church where Peter was leading them. Talking to multitudes of people. Believers, followers. We have an instance where those that were following Christ and Peter's teaching came up and they started giving all they had to support the church, support the ministry of the church. One gave everything and he was blessed. Peter said, bless you, for you gave everything that you had and not withhold. That's righteous. We have an example of a couple that decided to bring an offering. They made it look like it was a righteous thing to do. They did. Tell them, Peter, this is all we have. This is all we have. They lied with their hearts and the Holy Spirit. And what happens? God took them. Struck them dead. Okay. When we look at righteousness, are we holy righteousness? Are we looking for God in God's direction? Or do we have something in reserve saying, I only want to get to Him? of my heart. If you're sitting today and you're wondering where your righteousness is with God, it's not a bad thing, but it's a way to go home. You see, I cannot preach a message over righteousness without living it myself. Do you agree with that? I cannot teach how to be a peacemaker without living as a peacemaker. I cannot teach a Wednesday night class over how, what we believe, why we believe it, if I don't live it. The message is just a bunch of words on the page. It's scripture, but it doesn't have an impact if I'm not doing it from the heart. I'm not letting the Holy Spirit speak through me. It's important. It's important that we set where we are within righteousness in God's eyes today. It sets the tone for our week and the rest of our lives. We're told and we say, I live for God. The thing is, 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 it, is it in your heart? You can be righteous and you can be unrighteous. And it's important that we say righteous in God's eyes. As I finish up this morning, when we have our invitation, I want you to reflect within your heart, the deepest parts of your heart. Are you righteous? Only you can answer that. I cannot answer for you. You are responsible for yourself and where you stand in God. Where you stand in your salvation. Where you stand in your life at this point. God tells us you either stand with me or against me. Righteousness is where you want to stand. Because through righteousness, we can be glorified. Our spirits. 
So, as our instrumentalist comes to, to start our invitation, I ask that you seriously sit there and you reflect on where your heart is, what your status is. Are you out of righteous? Are you unrighteous at this point? Do you need to make that recommitment to become a righteous person in God's eyes? It's never too late. There's always renewal. There's always regeneration. Always recommitment. Recommitment doesn't mean you're weak. Recommitment means you just lost your focus and you need help. And you realize it. When we confess that to ourselves and admit it to ourselves, then God works miracles within our lives, supplying our needs, putting people in our way that need help. So, as we stand, I'm going to ask you to come forward. If you need to make that commitment for the first time, if you need to make that commitment for the second time, if you need to make that commitment to a church home, to have a church family, I ask you to come forward. If you need to just stay, come down here and pray at the altar, these altars are open. This is your communication time. As we can say.
a very appropriate song, not knowing right. what the message was going to be. It's a God thing. That's right. Okay. Always, always. It happens that way. That's the blessing in which I get to enjoy. All right. I want to thank everybody that joined us online. I want to thank everybody that is here this morning. May blessings be bestowed upon you during the week. May God be with you as you go to your next level of your adventure. God's got plans for you guys. He really does. Brother Billy Ray, would you mind this is prayer? Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here this morning. Uh, we bid farewell, I assume, to some of our valued members are going down the road, as Steve said, to a good adventure. Uh, Oklahoma should be an adventure. I can tell you. We're going to miss y'all and uh, hope to come back and visit once in a while. Lord, be with these people. Be with our church. God us through the rest of this day and bring us uh, your blessings. Uh, we thank you for everything you've done for our church and everything you uh, bless us with today. We thank for the Steve's message at heart this morning and uh, thank him for speaking your words. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen.